What's going on guys? So today we're going to talk about WordPress. And if you're like me, you probably jumped in with both feet and didn't even think about maybe some of the things you probably should have known before you even started uh, working on your WordPress site. Today, I hope to fill in some of those gaps and we're going to go right down the list and you're going to know what most everything does, hopefully by the end of this video. So let's jump right in. So the first thing is, is you're going to want to make sure that, I mean, at this point, I'm sure you know how to log in. You're going to obviously put your username and your password in, and you'll be inside of your WordPress site. Here we go. Awesome. So you'll notice up at the top left, we have a dashboard. We have home updates, posts, media, pages, comments, appearance, plugins, users, tools, settings, and collapse menu, which I never use. Um, so let's talk about what the major things are that you need to be aware of. So under appearance, that really is sort of like how your site appears, where you're gonna add and remove themes. I always recommend that you leave at least one of the standard default themes in place. And the reason why is if your theme for some reason breaks and you can't get into your WordPress site anymore, then you can go into your cPanel or however you get into your hosting and change the theme on the back end. That way you can log in. I've had to do that for a couple of instances and it's really frustrating if, it, if you ever experience. Probably doesn't happen that often, but it's happened to me. So um, under themes, we're gonna go ahead and click on that. This is where you'll see the themes like I was saying. Uh, make sure that you leave one of these in place. I don't really need all of these. If you want to delete one, just, um, you know, click on theme details, click on delete, and it'll be gone. And that lightens the load on your server. Of course, updates are really important. So you want to make sure that you update as frequently as possible. Sometimes the updates are because there's a vulnerability. And so you want to make sure everything is updated. Right now I'm using this Esteem uh, theme. If I wanted to change themes, all I have to do is click on add new and it's going to give me tons and tons of free themes to choose from. So that's how you get there. A lot of the themes require that you go into the customize section and that's where you're going to make changes to your site as far as the look and the feel, the colors and so on. In this particular case, I'm using a light version. It's not the pro version. It's a free uh, theme. Can't really say I recommend it or don't recommend it. Um, but under site identity, this is where you'll set your site title. It'll basically be in the search results. You can see my tagline is saying my WordPress blog. I don't really want that anymore. Usually you're going to customize that and say what your blog is about. And then you have certain options about header logo. So the logo right now is really just this word, but if I had a logo, I could actually upload it here. Usually, uh, the site icon is. Another thing that you're going to um, upload in, it'll show up here in this favicon or favicon uh, section, all right? So now that we've covered the site identity, colors, this is where you can sort of like create, you know, standard colors across all of the pages and whatnot. Most themes will have more options than this. This is just giving me the option for the background color, but you can usually choose font color and different things like that. Header media, this is where um, if I wanted a video, you know, playing in the background, that's, uh, and again, don't pay too much attention, but what you want to know, because each theme is going to be a little different, background image, that would be if I wanted a background image across the whole page of the site. Um, and, but then we get to menus and menus is more, it's, it's one of the areas that you probably are going to use. So uh, top level menu, you can create, um, uh, this is not how most menu setups actually look. It's kind of interesting. So top level menu, usually what you're going to see when you click on menu and let's just see if we go, let's see what happens. We create new menu. It's having me do everything over here. So, but if I wanted to create like a footer menu, you could add that here. Usually you're going to see this portion show up over here. And when you click on primary menu, then this is what is going to be at the top of the page. Now, primary menu in WordPress is a specific, typically a specific thing 
um, that triggers WordPress to know that this is what you want across the top of the page, okay? So if you check primary menu, this would actually replace this top level menu here. And uh, right now I'm sure that this top level menu is set to primary menu. It's not, but if I, actually if I click this, prim made this primary menu, it would actually show up with all these weird duplicates. If you want to remove one of these, all you have to do is, you know, click on this drop down button and hit remove. And we could actually do that for all of these additional about pages. We recently migrated the site. Uh, so that's probably where we're getting all of these duplicates. So, and then you, of course, would publish and that would keep uh, everything, you know, uh, that would make everything live. Going back from menus, let's look at widgets. What are widgets? So widgets are typically going to be found on the right hand side and also footer of a site. If we can get down to the footer. Down here, you know, this section. Uh, so footer one, you can add a widget and typically there's different kinds of widgets. But the one that's probably used the most is, is going to be your either a navigation menu. We were just talking about adding a footer menu or um, a text, uh, an arbitrary text uh, widget. So that's where you're going to get to those. And what's funny is a lot of home pages, they will have their widgetized home pages. So sometimes the stuff that you see um, along the right hand side are actually going to be controlled somewhere other than your home page. And you can be looking, driving yourself crazy looking on the home page uh, for that option and how to change it. And it's just not going to be there. Now the home page settings is a really important one, and I, I tell you why. It's because if you choose a um, your latest post, then basically this is what you'll get is a blog roll of all the blogs that you've published. Uh, but if you have a more of a standard, like let's say you have a standard site or a service site, you want a home page, you would actually need to change this to home page and then go find the page that is most like relevant as your home page and select that. You uh, and then you would hit publish. Not going to do that right now because I'm going to leave this alone. Additional CSS is where you can, let's just say that this section here, oh, I don't like, um, I don't like the red in that section. If I can get to it, it tells me, oh, the page title bar is red. Uh, it's this color. And I actually want this color to be, I don't know, uh, maybe I want it to be this blue, right? So what I could do is I could, uh, let me just have, open a notepad file real quick so I have that. I could add that new color that I want and I could actually select, and if you know a little CSS, in CSS you could just look up the code to, like uh, in this case, I know this is responsible for that background color and I could just say background color and I'll just, change it to this color and I'm going to close that with my semicolon and close my brace here. So now I can copy this and uh, this is, whoa, oh, just lost it. This is where you would add that. And this is really important for, you see how it changed this color and I kind of like the color, so I'll just hit publish. That's going to save my new CSS color that I just uh, created. And this is pretty advanced, so you, you might not be using this too much, but it's important to know where it is. One of the important things to remember about this is that if you have anybody work on your website, ask them to put the CSS over here. I've worked on websites where they've buried CSS all over the site, and then you don't know where, uh, where it is, and you find out later on that it was somewhere completely different. So uh, this is a header section. This is, this is proprietary to this particular theme. Uh, but essentially, it's going to tell me how I can, you know, change the header around, add a, add a slogan, you know, here. But this is not, this is, you know, this is this particular website and web, or I should say theme. So I'm not going to get too much into that, but just bear in mind that you can have these sort of um, sections built into the customize area. And a lot of times they're under theme options under the, the theme itself. So little tricky sometimes to find that but here's uh, where you can change like your site layouts and um, and so on 
here's another it's kind of interesting right primary color option uh, I just changed it with CSS I could actually change this here to this um, copy and I could change this here and hit publish and now actually I could go back and remove this custom CSS that I wrote uh, which was over here so I'll just comment it out and well you're not going to see any difference here but um, because it is it's the same color but I don't really need this anymore I'll just go ahead and delete it and I'll hit publish and you'll see it doesn't revert back to the red color we were using before design we just talked about uh, it says they have additional so author bio option related posts this would add like posts at the bottom of posts related to it so uh, we're going to go back out of this so this is a big area this whole that whole theme customize area uh, this usually is a shortcut to the same area the widgets that we saw under customize and you can see that we have a search function. We could just delete that if we didn't want to have it. Um, recent comments, we could delete those. The archives, categories, meta, nobody's really using that on the sidebar uh, anymore. And that's how we can make those changes as well. So this is kind of redundant. You'll notice that we had menus. And this is this is really what I was expecting to see. Um, is is what I was mentioning to you before so you can go to the menus area you can you know this is the top level menu and uh, right now it's all default but I can just delete all of these redundancies here and then this would and then I could make this my top level menu so in other words the menu that shows up oh I just got rid of the uh, about page um, so could remove all of them this is how you remove them obviously you can see it here privacy and we're just cleaning all this up oh yeah this is a good point if you wanted to move one page under another that's how you do it so now you go over contacts and you would find it uh, find the page under contact remove 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 almost done here folks I'm just cleaning that up and now I want to add my about page to this so I put this here and now if I click on primary menu and save this this will now if you go here you'll see the the menu has been replaced with this new menu all right so um, let's keep moving through uh, this area about this probably has some um, some information on the theme itself let's talk about uh, pages and posts what's the difference pages are evergreen these are pages here and then the posts are sort of like your blog role and that was what we were seeing in this particular case we see the uh, posts here every big section starts with a new post so those are all posts and those are meant to be published in sequence and then if you go to the contact page oh look our contact form is currently broken so we can fix that while we're at it but we'll wait for just a minute so that's your posts so if you have something that is going to be kind of like always the same on your website use pages so your typical pages will be a home about services fee schedule uh, contact privacy and site terms and am I forgetting thing I don't know anyway that's how you in in order to create a new page just go to pages click on add new same thing on posts you would just add new and if we wanted to call this uh, you know services and then we would write our text here and uh, if you have specific uh, HTML and you knew that you wanted to add it you could actually go from the visual editor so like let's say I wanted to make this an h1 which is a heading one and then i wanted to write more content just ignore the typos for time ignore the typos type so and and then i knew that oh i want this to be something a little bit different i want this to be i don't know um um strong 
So this this is like if I knew or needed to add HTML code in here, this is where I would do it. And of course, most everything can be done right here. So I just actually removed that by unchecking the bold. And don't forget, there's a kitchen sink here. If you click on this, it'll give you more options if you want to change the color of the of the text. So if I wanted to make this blue, for instance, um, if I want to make it italicized, well, I guess that's there. Uh, clear formatting is typically if you grab for a content from another site or somewhere else and you put it in here, you want to make sure that you're not bringing in any additional stuff. Uh, with it like special characters or something that you can't really see. So that's how you would clear the formatting. Uh, I don't know why, but if you wanted to do a strike through, you could. Um, but this is currently the content editor. Now the newer version of WordPress, which this needs to be updated, will have the Gutenberg editor. Um, and it uses blocks, uh, blocks uh, thing, <laughs> blocks editor. I haven't added, or I don't have it here. Let me just see if I can update this now. Well, let me just, uh, I'll just save the draft. So this is kind of nice. You can save the draft. You can also schedule it to be published at a different date. So you could just, you know, choose the date, the year, the time, and this won't actually show up on the site until that time. Let's see what else we got. So we got comments. Um, there are plugins that you can essentially disable comments. Uh, this is where if you have a comment, you can move it to call it spam or you can trash it and so on. And uh, you can also approve them. Let's go down to users. This is where you would add and delete users and you would also give them uh, a role with your site. Now, typically the administrator will only be the, be the only one that can change, make big changes on the site. You can have subscribers, usually subscribers are people that might order from you. There's editors as well, but I will say this, uh, editors, uh, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of limitations to an editor account. You probably most of the time be using either a subscriber role or a, um, admin role. So these, I, I find most of the time, these are not going to be used all that often. Your profile, this is where you can add stuff as well as if you change your email and you have set up a Gravatar, you click on this button and it'll import your picture from online from your Gravatar account. And then anytime you publish something on your site, it'll have your image as well. So don't forget that that's how you create your Gravatar. There are plugins that will allow you to create your own author Gravatar that is not... Um, you know, not provided externally. So in other words, it's right on the site itself. Um, but that's, you know, something for another video tools. You can import, you can export. Now you can export the content from your site. This is where you would do it or import content from another site. It gets a little tricky in here. And so I'm not going to go over a whole lot there. I think that would be something that we need to do a whole video on. And then don't forget in your settings, that's where you're going to see the name of the site title. Again, that's something we saw in the customized section of this particular theme as well. This is where if you change your site to an SSL encrypted site, you would add the HTTPS, but you would need to do some other things in the process. I actually will have a video on how to install an SSL certificate. So you get the green padlock symbol up here and it doesn't say not secure. If you uh, want to change your role, you can certainly do that here and you can also set your the time. Um, and if you go to the time zone section, that's where you'll be able to find uh, like the city that your time is located. Like if I said New York, I think New York's on here. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, Anyway, it's on here, I promise. There it is. Um, and you can set your you know week to start on a certain time. So writing, the I don't think there's a lot of things that you'll need to change in here unless you're sending out emails and there's uh, different things going on. There is an important thing to know under reading, which is this. If this button is checked, 
Google and other search engines will probably not index your site and you won't show up in the rankings. So this is a button that a lot of people forget to turn on, especially after they've done uh, had somebody work on their site. And uh, so then they wonder why they don't actually show up in, in Google. So let's see, a static page. This is the same thing that we saw over in the customize section. And I think that's really all that's important. Now, permalinks is another important aspect. I didn't look at, uh, I mean, we can look at discussion and media. I don't think there's anything too important in here. This is kind of going to be the stuff that you're going to regulate people's conversations with. Thumbnail size, this is fine. But permalinks is somewhere where things can go a little weird as well. Um, most of the time you're going to want to select post name. It'll just be your uh, website address and then forward slash the name of the post, like contact us. Now, right now I have, this is suboptimal in my mind. I don't really need to have a date, uh, but you can, you can see that if we go to the site itself, I believe the posts, if we uh, view, yeah, it has the date of when it was published. So once you have this in Google, I would be very cautious about updating this. I, don't, I wouldn't do it too fast. Um, so, but when you're ready to do, or if you need to do it, now you know where it's at, post name. But if you just built the site, make sure you set it to post name. That's gonna be your most common uh, setting. All right, so I think we've covered pretty much everything that oh media let's talk a little bit about media now in media you have uh, you essentially can sort by dates and you can look at images you can also sort so this would be tiled images across here and then this would be a list of images now right now because this was just moved the site was just moved we don't have any of the images but um, uh, you know th this is where you would see them you can always click on the images and see what the sizes are. That's really important um, to know how big the file sizes are. You don't want huge file sizes on a, on a website. It'll slow down your site. Very important to remember. Also, this says an updated version of WordPress is available. We're going to, and it says important before uh, backing it up, make sure, I mean, before updating it, make sure you back up your database. Um, I we can do that. Let's see. Oh, that's just going to tell me how. Um, I don't know that I will do that right now. And the reason for it is I would need to go into my PHP, my admin, and I'm pretty sure I have a backup of it. So I'm not terribly worried about it. Um, but you do want to do this. And if you don't know how to back up your database, you can always go to plugins and add new and look for uh, backup database and there's things like updraft and like this one here a million downloads in this back WP up and so on you can use any of these to back up your site and download a copy of it and just make sure that you have a copy now I did notice when I clicked on plugins that I have the classic editor activated if I wanted to deactivate it um, and, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because we were just talking about the Gutenberg editor. And now when I go to add new, we should actually see the Gutenberg editor since I deactivated. Yeah, here, welcome to the wonderful world of blocks. Now to go over real quick how this works, this is where you would add the title and you can add different blocks. And what you'll wanna know is that if you had a heading that you wanted to add, you would go here, images, paragraph, bulleted list, quote, a gallery, all of that. And um, l let's say I wanted to add um, a paragraph. I just just a text, and I uh, I write some text here, and I click on, and then I write more text here. The nice thing is, is that, and and let's say I I start my bulleted list uh, point point one point, and I'm holding down the shift button when I'm as I'm doing that, that keeps everything in one place. 
and let's say I wanted to make this a bulleted list, but it's a paragraph right now, you click on this button, go to the list, and it will automatically change. Now, in this particular case, I don't want this to be uh, a bulleted list, and if this is one, two, three, incidentally. And so what I could do is go back to paragraph, and then click here, and make those my list, but then this would sort of be my title to the list. And if I said, okay, well, this actually needs to be a heading, I would click there and I'd select the type of heading. Maybe this is an H2 and this is a heading for H3. So it's gonna be a little bit smaller. And then I write my content there. And then I say some really cool quote. And I decide I want this to look like a quote. I go here. And if I want to uh, change, let's say I wanted to change this uh, into an HTML block, right? So what you can do is click on these three buttons and edit as HTML. So this was the equivalent of going into the text area that we talked about before. And let's say I wanted to make it a, uh, a one, two, three list. So I changed this to from an unordered list to an ordered list. And then I hit enter. Now it'll stay like this, but I, I can also edit it visually and that changes it back. Um, let's see, wait a minute. So we'll hit convert to blocks. Now you see one, two. And now I can get rid of my one, two and fill out the information. One point da 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 and two point da da. I would hit publish in order to publish it. And um, when I publish here, um, I'm a pub it's going to give you an option to pub publish immediately or select a date. I'm going to go ahead and publish it immediately. And if I want to change my, my, um, let's close that real quick. If we want to change the structure of the URL, this is where we would actually change it. Okay. So we would go here and say, um, you know, my new post, something like that. And then I could update it. And now this would be the URL that people would see on the site. So this is really the long and short of it on how to create the, you know, change the site. If you have a featured image, this is where you would do it. Featured images look like this, confidence, reboot. They'll just show up over here in the left and that will be your featured image. You can see this is all, these are all blog posts, right? So that's really the long and short of it. If you, and one other thing I think would be kind of important is if you're in, if you're looking, oh, sorry. If you're looking at the website and you, you say, okay, well, I want to see this post and maybe I want to make some changes to it or something. Then up here, you can also click on edit post and it'll take you right into the editor where you can make the changes. Uh, you can see this link is, this image is broken and uh, I can just remove it here and I can hit update. And let's say I wanted to add an image. Let's, that might be important for you to know. Let's just go over to Pixabay. We can go to Pixabay or there's uh, Pexel and let's just say, uh, oh, I don't know. Friendly person. I don't know. Something like that. And uh, yeah, friendly Dude drinking his coffee, happy, you click on free download. I don't want large images, I want a very small image. And of course, Pixabay, you can donate, these are free images. You uh, then can, I'm just gonna move this over here and I'm gonna rename my file, I'm gonna call it uh, friendly person, like that. And now, if I go back over here, and I say, all right, I want to, uh, I want to add an image, add block, see if it's going to work for me, and image. And then I think you could just drag it. Yeah, I, a lot of times I'll, I'll uh, click that, you know, upload. You can just drag it over. And, uh, you know, then you can move this around, you would need to move this block. You would need to create another block. So let's uh, remove that. And then we'll create another block, which would be a paragraph. 
and uh, put this here. And then you can move this by clicking the, the up arrow. arrow. <laughs> uh, if you don't want to have a caption here, if you don't put anything in there, it will, um, it just gives you the option to write something if you wanted to, but if you don't, then it, it doesn't uh, change the image. So we can preview it. That's how you would do this. And now I would see what that image looks like. If you want to make that image smaller, you can also do that by grabbing the corners or like this. You could also put it on the left hand side if you want stuff to wrap around it or the right hand side, you can center it. Um, and that's really, really it. I hope this has been a good overview for you. Make sure to like and subscribe if this helps you. That way it keeps me recording more of these videos for people that find themselves sort of stuck in different scenarios in WordPress and building websites and all that good jazz.